yeah. So we'll begin now that um, we have established where we are, where I am, and where you are. And we are now in the present moment. So perhaps um, we can settle down then and... Uh, ha. Huh. Get ourselves comfortable. Okay. And just sit back. And allow yourself to relax. Allow yourself to withdraw. Withdraw from the world and into into the real world, which is what we experience. What we experience within. The world of our emotions, the world of our thoughts. That is the world. So we spend a bit of time investigating further. Drawing in and settling down. So just noticing what is happening in your world right now. How do you feel? What are the thoughts going through your head? And giving space for all of them to enter. Not pushing anything away. Not saying, okay, this is, you're not welcome. This is not welcome. That is not welcome. But allowing yourself in. Allowing yourself to be heard.
So what do you hear when you look at your mind? What do you feel when you come into your body? So, bringing your mind inward. We spend a bit of time. Just grounding ourselves in our bodies and sending a little bit of goodwill to our bodies. Start with our hips. Wish ourselves well. Notice how it feels. Send a little bit of loving kindness. And then our shoulders and our arms, noticing how they feel. And just sending them our well wishes. Hoping your arms are comfortable at ease.
and in our chest, chest and upper body. Again, just wishing it well. Wishing ourselves in. And our abdomens and the lower part of our body. Again, may it be at ease. May it be well. And our legs, noticing how it feels. And wishing our the lower part of our bodies bit of goodwill, good wishes. So when we relate to our body and we relate to our mind, we have a bit of kindness, a bit of acceptance of all its little quirks and problems and deficiencies and and well, goodness as well. And we relate to ourselves with a bit of kindness. And so we are aware of our body. Aware of the whole body, noticing how we feel right now. Allowing it to be heard, for it to be just the way it is.
We allow ourselves to be. We allow ourselves to relax. As your body relaxes, notice how your mind also relaxes. Often we hold tension, thoughts, emotions, we hold it in our body. As you settle down, perhaps your breath becomes obvious. If not, just happy to be in the present moment.
bringing your mind back for the last few minutes of the meditation, last five minutes. Just remembering your the attitude of allowing things to be, being curious and listening to what is going on in your body and mind. Being gentle with ourselves. Not expecting anything. But just listening. Listening to what is going on. So we come towards the end of the meditation. <laughs> Just um, Just before we finish, just reflecting on um, what happened in the last 20 minutes, half an hour. As your mind settle down, what helped it to settle down? Maybe it didn't settle down. What made it worse? And finally, before we end, we once again, with goodwill in our hearts, we share the merit of our practice, the merit of our life with all beings. We wish that all beings find peace, find ease, find well-being. Wherever they may be.
May all beings be well. May all beings be happy. May all beings be free from anger and in ill will. May they take care of themselves happily. When you're ready, you can slowly open your eyes. Okay. So, um, I thought I'd talk today on something I've been, um, um, we're on our rains retreat, so you have a lot of time to reflect on the Dhamma and reflect on what, what, um, what, gives you the energy to do this work, you know, because um, we've got, as monastics, we have three months to meditate and you go like, three months, that's it, I'm really going to go for it and get enlightened this time. But anyway, it, it, it fell apart in a couple of hours. <laughs> and so I've been reflecting on faith, on sadha, and um, you, what energy, what, what, um, what the Buddha spoke about, what helps us to, to practice, what helps us to have um, the energy and the, the inspiration to, to do what is seemingly easy, but just doesn't happen. <laughs> However hard we try, like we really want to, we really want to let go of these thoughts, but you know, they just, um, <laughs> they just keep coming and the more we want them to go away, they just keep coming more. So, so I was um, um, thinking about what the Buddha meant by faith, what the Buddha meant by sadha, because this is one of the spiritual faculties. If you have um, heard of the five spiritual faculty, faculties, you've heard of the five spiritual faculties. It's um, uh, sadha, faith, virya, effort, sati, mindfulness, samadhi, stillness, and panya, wisdom. So this is, this is a big topic. So I was thinking about faith, the first one, sadha. So these are, one of, these are the qualities that help the mind to grow. And so what does faith, what does sadha mean? So um, I looked in the dictionary and sadha translates as to place the heart upon. To place the heart upon. The means the heart. And sadha is to, to literally to, to place the, 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 the heart uh, upon. So this translates as, a, it's commonly translates as faith, but it could be um, trust, it could be um, confidence, it could be belief, it could be devotion. 
So what 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 does what comes up for you when you think of the word faith? So um, quite often, most of us come to a sense of come here, come to this Zoom space, come to a monastery because we're kind of we are a little we're dissatisfied, aren't we? All of us are kind of deep down inside. We know there is something something greater to our lives. But we just haven't, we are looking outside, most of us have looked outside, looked in relationships, looked in, you know, having security, stability in the world, looking for some sense of, um, some sense of evenness in our life, some sense of happiness that is kind of, um, uh, um, you could say meaningful. I'm not sure what it is for you, but for me, anyway, we're, we're looking for we're looking for something, and we just don't find it. So, and then one day, at least for for me, anyway, you you see someone, you meet someone, you hear a teaching, you read a book, and for me, it's often for me, it was a teacher, a person who kind of seemed to seemed to have what I wanted. You know, they were, um, they, they, they were uh, peaceful, they were grounded, they were comfortable in their own skin, they were at ease in the world and they seemed to do a lot of, a lot of um, good. There's something there that you recognize. And so, so for me and perhaps for you as well, that's where that's where your heart suddenly goes aha you know there's something there that i don't have and um we somehow connect to that we somehow our heart lifts and and we we recognize in that person something that you know i get it they seem to know what life is about. So perhaps for you, but for me, this is where, where faith first began. When you see, when you he hear a teaching, see somebody um, come across a book and you say, aha, there's something there that I don't quite get, but I recognize. I recognize and somehow, somehow see the possibility. So this is a kind of faith which is, you could say, um, someone called it um, longing faith. That is, we long to be like somebody. We long to be like what the teaching of what the teaching uh, describes. So it's kind of a, a faith that is we is outside ourselves and we we um, um, kind of resonate with, but it's kind of outside. But this is important too. This is often where we begin. We go like, hmm, this is something that is worth pursuing, isn't it? I uh, I have to say one of the, one of the people who I I I is, is is in our monastery in Perth. There's one of the workmen. He's been there for like um, fifteen years. He 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 probably you know didn't finish school, uh, doesn't have an education, and probably doesn't think a lot. But um, when I see Andy digging a hole, you go like. Man, that's someone who is, you know, isn't complicated. And when he's digging a hole, you kind of go like, I want to be like that. He doesn't seem to carry any weight, the weight of the world on his shoulder. He's just, he's just, uh, you know, singing a song usually. And uh, you kind of go like, hmm, um, what, do you, what do you do, Andy? How can you be so e at ease with yourself? So you know you 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 see this in somebody, and you kind of um, 
there is there is some resonance so this could be a teacher but you know it could be andy who digs holes in our monastery so we start with this kind of of um, uh longing longing to to um be what we see in somebody else i don't know if you recognize that but but that's how i have started but then of course it doesn't last we go to a teaching we meet a inspiring person but we leave their presence and we are still back with our own little minds and um, you know it's impermanent um and so we realize this uh something that we recognize this this um this uh, uh faith that we see in someone else's ability it's something that we have to find in ourselves isn't it so then we realize that uh, perhaps if it was a teacher that you went to see or, or um, a book that you read um you realize that the next step in faith is to have the trust that to put what this person teaches what the dhamma teaches to put it into practice so faith allows us to do something which we would otherwise not have done it allows us to open to a possibility to open to a way of being a way of thinking that we wouldn't otherwise have gone into we are, we are so usually so used to doing things the way we always did it we rarely question our thoughts we rarely question our attitudes we rarely question the way we operate and faith allows us to question all these things how am i thinking how am i relating to my to to the practice how am i how am i operating that is different to what um the buddha teaches so faith gives us the ability to the willingness to try a different path it gives us the confidence and uh, the uh, willingness really to investigate so um i'm not sure how that has worked for you but after many years of practice um and uh making the same mistake over and over again i'm listening to many talks i realized that uh, you know i don't have to believe everything i think quite often we are so sure of our um our perceptions of people and our perceptions of the world and perceptions of you know how things should be so sadha faith has allowed me to kind of say maybe the way i'm doing things isn't necessarily the only way you know how about i try a little bit of forgiveness a little bit of kindness you know um allowing things to make to make to go wrong allowing mistakes to happen so trying to recognize that quality in our minds that 
that are that is willing to willing to just try things in a different way because the buddha said so or a teacher said so so faith allows us another thing it allows us it allows us to surrender we again are so fixed in how we react so fixed in how we we um face the world faith allows us to just suspend our habitual reaction and it asks us to just surrender surrender to how we usually do things so um again you know quite often we think that we need to have a teacher and we need to have somebody you know tell us do this teaching do do, do this practice don't do that practice and i'm always like always doubting you know shall i do this shall i do that is 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 should i focus on my breath should i um practice loving kindness and so faith allows me to just kind of go okay i'm just going to give it a try don't know how we, whether it's the right practice or not we don't know if it's going to work or not but i'm just willing to surrender and just give it a try so quite often you do a practice but it may not work but you know i have faith to just go ahead and give it a go so i'm not sure if you come to those those uh those um, um problems as well you know doubt is one of our great great um well doubt is one of the hindrances and the um uh, um uh the the doubt actually can be quite good for us as well because sometimes doubt is what helps us to um question and to to you know go like hmm this doesn't seem to be working so actually doubt is quite helpful for us as well so um yeah so when we have doubt we bring in this quality of faith to try something new to try a new practice to try a new way of um um thinking to try a teaching that we you know didn't think we were capable of so faith is actually it's quite it's quite humbling isn't it it is it allows us to put aside what we think we know and um try something new try something we wouldn't otherwise have tried so um i thought i just uh, ask you guys questions because <laughs> i haven't been talking for a while i've been quiet so it's hard to hard to get my my head around what the heck do i say but um <laughs> uh um, but you know just to open it up and say how do you how do you um how do you think of faith how do you bring up faith in your mind and how do you practice faith what 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 um, allows faith you to allows faith to uh arise for you so 
perhaps, like I said, I haven't been talking, so I <laughs> thought maybe perhaps you can share how how um, you relate to this this word faith and how you do practice and how faith has arisen for you. So until other people yes, think yes. about it, maybe yeah, I will wondering. start whenever. Yes, thank you. For me, like it was, um, there was faith was not initially there. It was the it was a gathering of the knowledge which was there, and what is Buddhism? So listening to the Dhamma talks, that was the one which was there. But then when when I slowly understood what is Dhamma and started meditating and uh, learning that it is a practical way of you know it is working and then how big it is, then slowly that Sadda confidence um, started growing up. And, um, uh, you know, and uh, as, as when, when that knowledge um, kind of get little more and more mature, the Sadda grew kind of like exponentially. So that is what happened to me. And um, so it kind of gave me that, uh, uh, you know, confidence of sitting in the cushion and seeing, you know, let it go and see what happens. Um, uh, so that is what uh, confidence did. So it kind of didn't come up. It kind of grew. It grew. And when it grew, mm -hmm. it opened up more. And then it, then I could understand more things. And then it grew more kind of so. So it went hand in hand and mm -hmm. helped in that way. That's true. Confidence actually builds on itself, doesn't it? The the more you realize and see something, you kind of go like, oh my God, if this is right, then maybe the next step is right. Maybe the entire teaching is right. Maybe maybe enlightenment is possible. So yes, every time you take another step forward, it, it gives you confidence in the whole journey. So yeah, yeah it kind of verifies verifies the teaching for us when we experience it for ourselves. I'm sure everybody everybody in this room has had some little taste of the Dhamma, which is why you're here. Uh, any, anybody else have ever... Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was thinking like, how do we, how do we cultivate faith? You know, how do we develop it? How do we keep it alive? You know, how, and um, one way is to, uh, um, to read, to study the teachings, to, um, you know, actually listen to the Dhamma, practice the, uh, read books, and that, that kind of inspires you to, to put it into practice. So yeah, Shirley. Uh, before Shirley, Karin was there, can I? Oh, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Karin. Good to see you and to hear you, Venerable. Thank you so much. Hello. Um, um, Two observations. I notice my the word faith is very much mm -hmm. still automatically linked to my Catholic upbringing, mm -hmm. the faith mm -hmm. of God, right. and it was a very um, uh, what's the word um, rules to follow, ways of looking at it, mm -hmm. the way I was taught this, using your opening your mind and questioning was actually not welcomed or encouraged interesting interesting so i i constantly and i'm not a practicing catholic but i i find it has it has um filtered my mind somehow so ah. so I, I i constantly have to sort of it's it's almost like the tide i sort of have to sort of lean away from that Right, right. Um, and then the second thing I've noticed, I, I'm very much influenced by my intuition. Mm -hmm. And I think my intuition on, on many occasions has, has always been right. 
but my intuition is very much linked to anxiety and resentment. I feel something, or oh, something is happening there, something is coming there, anxiety. And then, oh, why is this happening? Oh, look at you. And, oh, oh, and, and then this ha reminds me of that. So I get caught up in all of this, which with the Dharma now, I again, these are things I feel I, I constantly have to peel them back. Because there are ways of looking, ways of uh, feeling that uh, it's actually, it's the suffering that I'm trying to get away from. So for me to then almost questioning my intuition and say it might not be so, is very hard because it has been my guide. Mm, right, yeah. separate from perhaps the religious tradition which I left yes. behind then I moved into my world but which is very right. much suffering yeah wow so to leave that behind which is I think which is the way mm -hmm. but that is oh it's like pushing mm -hmm. pushing rocks mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. And so where do you sort of, where do you find, uh, uh, where do you put your heart is the question, isn't it? That's right. Yes. Yeah, where do you put your, place your heart? That is so interesting. To your, your first point about, um, um, you know, faith being just rules to follow and just to believe just to believe. Actually, probably faith is the, the wrong translation. It's a, probably a wrong use of the word sad, wrong translation for the word sadda. Because to me, for what the Buddha um, uh, uh, encourages us, us to do is to have the faith to question, isn't it? It's the, the, he is asking us not to believe. He's specifically asking us not to believe in the Kalama Sutta. He's specifically asking us. In fact, what I get from the word faith is the confidence to investigate, the confidence to question, the confidence to, 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 um, to, uh, uh, what I usually think is right, or what even the Buddha says is right, to actually the faith to investigate, the faith to question, the faith to find it out for myself. That's what that's what I think the Dhamma is about. The faith to find it out for myself. So it's quite a different kind of um teaching it's not to believe it's specifically not belief you believe in the beginning but believe enough believe in the path believe that this is possible you know believe in the practice it's not really believe it believe enough to try the practice but you have believe to try it out for yourself so it's quite different mm. yeah and then and then your second point that you you know then what we, we then tend to realize is our, our own kind of fallible mind and our anxieties and our so-called intuition, which is often very colored by our defilements. Mm -hmm. So um, then where do we place our hearts? So yeah, that becomes tricky. That becomes tricky. Mm -hmm. Quite often I uh, chant and I uh, remember uh, a person, you know, I bring to mind the qualities of a teacher or you know, someone who inspires me and I go like, ah, well, that those that qualities that, that I see Najan Brahm or something, ah, that's what that's what I aspire to. That's that's what I, you know, try and cultivate in my own mind. So I try and place my heart on those um yeah, th those qualities in someone else, you know that I admire, um, I'm not sure if that helps. Yeah, I, I think you've worded it, the defilements of the mind, that, that is, that's very clear. So th thank you yeah. for putting it in all those ways. It gives me another way of, yes, thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, um, yeah. 
Shelly. Hello, uh, everybody. Thank you very much, uh, Venerable Pecker. I, I hope you're having a lovely retreat and a very peaceful oh, time. Yes. Um, yeah, I was thinking back what drew me to Buddhism many, many, many years ago. I've been practicing for many, many years and often had had very little confidence in my, my own practice and mm -hmm. just felt for years I was a sort of failed meditator and pretty useless. <laughs> And I don't know what it was. I don't know what it was that kept me going. I have no idea. Something must have worked to keep me going. Um, maybe because it, I met nice people. I don't know. Um, but what drew me to Buddhism was you put your finger on it. Really, this this sort of confidence to investigate, mm -hmm. to, to question. Um, I, that's what drew, and the kindness, the loving kindness, that drew me to 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 to, to the Dharma. But then, after years and years and years, gradually, uh, again, you put your finger on it. We don't have to believe our thoughts. We don't have to believe our emotions. We don't have to believe our failures. We don't have to believe any of that because none of it belongs to us. And it's always arising and passing away. So this, and it's it's pretty <laughs> painful as well. So, I mean, the Buddha really put his finger on it when he, he, he taught these three marks of existence mm. and also the noble eightfold path you realize my goodness it all fits together as you practice mm. it just mm. makes first of all it makes sense on an intellectual level that's yeah. again what drew me uh, yeah. but then it really you sort of really think yeah it really helps in this moment to bring peace and um it was interesting in the meditation because my meditation's gone a bit to pot over the last few weeks. Um, but and I just and 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 I did have a peaceful meditation. And at the end, I thought, oh, she's going to might going to say, oh, look how peaceful you are at the end. But you didn't. You said you may not be peaceful. Which so thank you for that. But there was some part of me that was peaceful with that because I wasn't sort of taking myself so personally. Mm. Uh, I wasn't taking, and I just thought, oh well, yes, there. I know what there are. There are reasons why, you know. Um, it's it, it it you know it's all conditioned, and yeah, I can't really put it into good words. But the faith in, and and I could actually just look at it, and yeah, the part of the the, the mindfulness, the awareness. Oh, this is just a rather restless mind going all over the place, and just grasping after things. Just the bit of you that's watching that is actually okay. And that's where my refuge is and that's where my faith is. So I just wanted to 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 to, to, to share yeah. that. Actually it's all okay really. Mm. Wow. <laughs> I don't know whether that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, no, it makes a it it it, it, it is it's true wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but it's not mine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's the, that's the relief. And it'll pass away as Once well. I start to think, oh, I'm, now I'm wise. Now I've got yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. That's when it falls again. apart, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Sad, yeah. sad, it's, sad. It's, it's, it's trusting the Dharma. Yeah. It's just trusting the Dharma, whatever that is. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Whatever that is. Sad, <laughs> sad, sad. Janaki. Oh, Janaki? Yes, I'm meeting you for the second time on Zoom. <laughs> right. Right. Do you remember? I was I, 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 at the end of April, I think. The end of Easter. Easter. That's Easter. right. Yes, of course, of course, of course. Yes. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Are you still in Oxford? No, I'm in, Oxford? I'm in Sydney. I'm in Sydney. Oh, you have to come back. Okay. Yeah. Oh, then it's the same because I'm only two hours in advance. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. It's yes. it's almost nine, right. really nine, ten here. Yeah, right. in New Zealand. Yes, yeah. it's ten past seven. Um, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, it's nice to see you again. Um, 
uh, the Shraddha that um, you were talking about, and yes, it's, it's really very good, but I am very reluctant to accept it as a faith because faith could be something blind because mm. many people have blind faiths. Right. Uh, yes. So yes. I think it's an understanding um, and an appreciation, those two come, come, coming together. Uh, it's an appreciation built up uh, on built on the understanding. The more you understand, then you appreciate it more. And then mm. with that process that you can um, you know develop your faith I and mean, because faith should be within should be built within yourself and not on anything external. That's mm. I that's yeah. how I have built up my uh, confidence in Dhamma um, mm. through understanding. So yes. Shraddha, it could be something for me, it's like um, upholding goodness. Um, so that's how I usually look at it. But always it is connected with the understanding. Otherwise, I don't think that I will have confidence in anything if I don't have the understanding. Mm. Um, so that's how I look mm. at it. And the more you learn Dhamma, the more you understand it, then the Shraddha develops. Mm. So once it's developed, of course, when you have a, um, a very good understanding and a very high level of Shraddha, then it's just like removing the reverse gear of your car. So you will never go back again. You go forward only. You can, you will never go back. So there is no reverse gear. <laughs> So that's how I look at it. <laughs> sad. Sad, sad, sad. But our faith oh, is never, never really complete until we are a Sota Panna. So Sota until Panna, then, that's right. so, hmm. yeah, until then, our faith is always a little bit, you know, not I, complete. I, don't think so. I mean, in my case, of course, there hasn't been anything that would shake my. I mean, so I, I, I honestly don't like to call it faith. Even I, if it's if there is anything that has uh, something called faith, it is only within myself. I have faith in myself, but not in anything else. But I do completely. I, I confide and I have the confidence in Dhamma. So, and I, the more I understand, the more uh, my appreciation is. So it's a, it's a higher, very great level of appreciation so yeah. that's how I have developed my shraddha so it, yeah, right. it, it will never shake I mean it hasn't shaken yeah, right. up to now you know, even for a split second so <laughs> <laughs> I'm developing too I mean it's going on but I yeah I don't know where would be my destination but the thing is yeah I'm going forward, uh -huh. forward but not forward, never backward now Sad, sad, sad. <laughs> sad. <laughs> okay, and Madhu, oh, Manur has written confidence. No, not Manuri, Madhu. Oh, yeah, Ma Ma Manuri has also, ah, yes. also written confidence may be better. Confidence may be better. Yeah, when Uchanda likes the word confidence. I, there's so many translations. There's trust, there's devotion. Um, uh, yeah. So many nice translations. So for Madhu writes. Yeah, it's upholding. That's what I have read in somewhere, but I can ah. let us send it to you. Yeah. Uh, Venerable, Venerable Dr. Punnaji has translated in ah. that way. It's more in tune with the Uphold. real meaning of the word right. Shraddha. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Shraddha. Right. Yeah. That's da what means given. heart. Yeah. No, no. Da is not in hard, not in his translation. It's uphold. Mm, okay. Yeah. Uphold. And, uh, because the heart is just an organ, and it's it's part well, of the, one of the thirty-two parts of body part, uh, thirty-two body parts. So it heart cannot. Make, uh, it is. It can't make decisions. It only can feel because of our hormonal activities. So when it gets to the heart, the heart, heart, heart has many, many meanings. The has many, many meanings, not just uh, the then, physical. Anyway, we'll leave this aside. Now, yeah, Madhu yeah. says, <laughs> for me, 
It started off after hearing the stories of the Buddha, for example, how he overcame many battles through loving kindness. Jaya Mangal Gata, which to me was very inspiring. And then by seeing living examples of this made it even made it really solid that it is not simply limited to some ancient stories, but these qualities can be developed even today. <clears throat> exactly. That <clears throat> he overcame battles through loving kindness. I also found that like, you know, <clears throat> we are taught exactly the opposite. We're taught to kind of keep going, keep trying. <laughs> I, we've, I've been, uh, I was also watching a little bit of the Olympics this afternoon and when you turn on your computer, you see all these interesting things and you go like, wow, I mean, what drives those people to do such incredible superhuman feats, you know, what type of, what, do they have faith, you know, what, 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 what makes a human being so, so determined to do these, these acrobatics you know and then um, then remembering what the, the Buddha um, his acrobatic was was um, overcoming incredible obstacles with loving kindness you know wow a totally different path to one of these Olympic athletes um, yeah so yes it's it's an interesting teaching the, the Dhamma how it how it relates to the to Olympic athletes, I'm not sure. Anyway, Ver, Veronica. Hello everyone. Um I've been practicing like Shirley for really quite a long time. I think I'm a very slow learner. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but there's always about um, what passes for this lifetime's personality called Veronica. There's always been a very strong yearning. Um, yes, I just can call it yearning. And I find that Sada gradually over the years, the idea of sadha not as a set of rules, but just as confidence, trust, faith has answered that yearning. It wobbles a bit, but when I'm really feeling faith in the Dharma path, it alleviates the painful yearning. That's all I can say, really. Right, right. Yeah. Yes, there's something that we know, we 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 long for, and it it hurts, like you said. We know it's there, and. Um, we don't seem to quite be able to to embody it, but we have the Dhamma, we have the practice, and we go like, okay, I'm just going to follow the instructions. Yeah. And then we have a little bit of happiness, and it's enough to keep us going. <laughs> Like the Buddha said, beautiful in the beginning, beautiful in the middle, and beautiful in the end. Thank mm -hmm. goodness for that. Imagine if we were suffering in the middle, all of us would have quit by now. <laughs> yeah, so that little bit of little bit of su little successes we have is enough for us to keep going. Keep keep the taste buds alive and we, you know have the confidence to keep walking the path, however slow we are as learners. <laughs> yeah, it's very humbling, the Dhamma. There's only, there's only uh, most of us probably will have to keep going for a couple of lifetimes, but at least, at least there's something in our hearts that goes, this, I'm not going to give up. 
this definitely mm. is the right way and next life we're well, probably in the next life <laughs> here we are go- here we are you know as buddhists as uh, practitioners of the dharma because from another life we've kind of gone like i'm going to keep going at this because i know i know there's nothing else to do with my life so yeah yeah so that 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 the something carries on something carries on um el uh, yeah elena says even if it feels like progress is slow i sometimes look back a few years and see how different things are now that gives me confidence to keep going thank you for sharing yeah yeah you got to look back over long periods of time not like yesterday last week <laughs> morning evening what happened i was so good in the morning what happened <laughs> Yes, yes. Ajahn Brahmali always says, you know, look back over like um uh, like a a a 5 year period, you know, um 10 year period and then you can see, hmm, have I progressed, have I regressed and not yeah, to to look over, you know, a good 5 year period and then you can go like, yes, it's true. I not quite as you know annoyed as i usually would be under these and i really am not quite so annoyed when i when i usually would have been yeah so yes look keeping that uh, long a uh, long scale of things when we uh, reflect on our, our practice yes it does give you confidence we wouldn't be here otherwise uh, yes but Shana, that also you, oh sorry sorry sorry, sorry remember go no yeah no sometimes you know looking at um, a few years you also see yourself decline i've also seen myself decline you know um looking over five years one one five year period i noticed myself having become quite complacent for example you know comfortable everything's okay um so it is good to reflect back over those long periods and see hmm what has gone on in, in my life but it didn't always up 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 you know and then you have to really dig deep and uh, re you know see yeah gosh i thought i was practicing i thought i was doing the right things but hmm 5 years later i'm quite you know complacent for example or um yeah so it's it's uh, sometimes it's it's not you you might be doing the practice you might be doing all the right things you know for me living in the monastery doing all the right things and yet it hasn't worked it hasn't actually um given the results that the, that that should be there so then you you do have to then really investigate how am i practicing am i where am i where am i sort of subtly stuck that i'm not um actually going forward anymore so yeah then you then 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 that's where you do have the faith to investigate truly investigate really dig deep <laughs> cuz uh the instructions aren't quite working yeah breeder lovely to see you venerable yofeka and everyone there um yeah. faith for me i guess you know i have real faith in the practice real trust in it and that's what has sustained me for quite a long time mm-hmm. however i get really the bit it's not that i lose the faith or the trust i just come back to it in my being my knowingness that you know knowing i really have faith and trust in the practice in the teachings the dharma and you know being around the sangha But, however as i say i soon get to what i'm about to say i get um it, it gets quite shaken for me not that i lose it i don't lose it or 
you know, I still have that lovely faith there and trust in it. But it's when I'm around a lot of other people, if you like, you know, people whom I've maybe grown up with, gone to school with, um, former work colleagues, all kinds of situations, yeah, who are not, we'll say, in the practice, have very different views on on life, on people, on what's going on in society around me. And, you know, it, it disturbs me, I suppose, is what I'm saying. It doesn't really affect my faith or trust in the Dharma or, you know, total knowingness and belief in it. But it's just, I it kind of, it, 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 um, I'm trying to think of a word for it, but it soils it for me a little bit. You know, but then I'm able to come back again to once mm -hmm. I practice with the practice. Mm -hmm. um, it's quite difficult to explain, but why, why I suppose what I'm saying a bit really, and this is something that's ongoing with me for a, for many, quite a number of years, really. Um, you know, I question, well, do I need to not be around some? There's nothing wrong with the mm -hmm. people that I'm that affects me at all in the least, yeah. but. You know, there there's a real bond I have with a lot. There so are some of the a lot of these people. You know, through many years, there's part of me that I don't want to. Even some family, should I? You know, I question: Do I need to not be yeah. around these people? And I don't like that because I love and yes, care yes. about these people. So yes, yes, I'm just yes. I'm sharing that. You know, in yes. the just by sharing yes. it, even you know, but yes, um, yes. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess some people, you know, you have to associate with like your family and, and uh, mm -hmm. those who are in, uh, have given you a lot in your life. So you can't exactly uh, abandon them. But um yeah, I mean the Buddha does say did say the first the first verse of the Mangala Sutta is Asevana Chabalana to associate with the wise, you know. So um there is something to that. The people whom we associate with is what we become like. So the more we are able to associate with uh, wise people, the more we do and body and you know do um take on their qualities so yeah it's tricky <laughs> <laughs> it is mm -hmm. tricky mm -hmm. but yes 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 perhaps it means to to keep the qualities of a wise person in one's mind as we go through the day um in the absence of being in their presence to keep the qualities of a wise person in our minds, associate with that in that way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. So I think we have come to um, seven thirty, which I think was well, sorry. Mm -hmm. yeah. Whatever time it is for you, nine ten thirty. <laughs> and uh, I um, thank you so much, everybody, for contributing. That was very, very, uh, very fruitful, um, and a lot to, uh, uh, yeah, very good food for the soul, <laughs> good food for the heart. Thank you. I learned a lot as well. Sorry, I, I really didn't know where to start. I, I was like, oh no, I haven't spoken. <laughs> <laughs> but um, a very fruitful discussion. Um, thank you. And thank you so, very much Venkabar, for you as well, for the all the rich teachings. I mean, that was a very wonderful discussion on Sadda. And it gave us a lot of opportunities to discuss and learn from each other as well and to understand it deeper and you deciphering, deciphering it and explaining it as well. And um, so, as you know, today's teaching was offered on a donation basis in the spirit of generosity. And with your generosity, Anukampa Bikuni Project uh, can provide these, these rich 
teachings in the future as well. Dhamma talks, teachings, and also meditation retreats in person, online, um, visiting teachers, and so many other activities. And uh, Anukampa Bikuni Project, as you know, is a UK charity. And uh, Anukampa Grow Monastery in Oxford that gives more space for the monastics. And uh, Venerable Upeka was there in, um, until about June, I think. And I hope, I hope to see you again next year as well, Venerable. And uh, so, you know, having people like Venerable Upeka coming and, you know, other, other monastics coming and visiting us as well. So your donations are very valuable in maintaining this monastery and the charity and this space with community. Um, so I invite you to support when the Anukampa Bikuni project, if you are able. Uh, what we need these days is a financial support. And um, uh, it is the ongoing activities and ongoing the monastery costs and uh, the future planning, all those things. Uh, at the moment, we are um, still um, uh, doing... Uh, many adjustments, repairs, things like that for the the new monastery to make it a kind of a monastery standard and uh, just to upkeep as a building as well. Um, so if you would like to support the new monastery and the Sangha's requisite, you're invited to donate by using uh, the link that Matthias has put there. And if you're able, standing orders are particularly helpful and um, uh, there's, there's, uh, you know, any, any small amount is welcome and very appreciated. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Manori, as well. Yes, so uh, very nice to see everybody and take care and uh, well, have the faith to keep going. Have the sadha to keep going. And we'll see you in a, I think again, uh, I'll see you in a couple of weeks. <laughs>